All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is our last day in Vietnam. We are in the old quarter of the capital of Hanoi and it is absolutely freezing. So I need to get myself something hot. So we're gonna head out for some pho because I thought, well, I have to get a proper Northern Hanoi pho while I'm in Hanoi. And my friends, my Vietnamese friends have told me that this spot that we're going to is the best that they've had anywhere in Hanoi. So if it's the best for my Vietnamese friends, I'm sure it's gonna be the best for me too. We're also gonna be getting some bun cha because we cannot come to Hanoi and not eat bun cha, can we? So guys, without further ado, let's go. As I said, guys, it is pretty cold and I don't mean by Asian standards. I mean, it's cold. It's like 15 degrees, it's wet just a continuous drizzle in the air since I got here yesterday. So I really need to warm myself up. Coming from Saigon, where it was like 35 degrees, so I should probably make the most of it here. But yeah, I am absolutely freezing my you know what's off. So let's get a nice hot bowl of soup. All right, so here's the first stop, guys. And ah, oh, we've got a queue. Right, so not very often you're going to find me queuing for food, guys. I never, ever, 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 ever queue for food. But I'll make an exception for this place because it smells incredible, looks incredible, and it is full of locals. Not a foreigner in sight, apart from me. Even though I've just noticed they've got a Michelin recommendation, so you would think there would be foreign tourists here. Tiny little service set up. Apparently, you've got to get your bowl and take it to the table yourself, which is quite rare for Vietnam. Usually, they come and bring it over. You've got all the steam, because it's cold, like, as I said, then you've got all the steam rising up from the pot. We've also got the, like, the fried dough sticks over there. I think everyone thinks I'm a bit mad here. I'm definitely in the way. <laughs> come on. Thank you. All right, let's go find a spot. Right, the place itself is old school, guys. Hat bro. Oh, there's another foreigner. All right, guys, look at this. Look at the whole pieces of spring onion. So you, as we learned in Saigon, this is a northern fur, so you don't have all the herbs on the side and the bean sprouts. The Thai, which is uh, the fresh beef. And then you've got that flank. This is what I came for, guys. Thinly sliced, look at that. Oh. Then we've got that wonderful, cloudy, murky broth that's just been bubbling away for probably two days. Oh, heaven. And then obviously we've got those beautiful, fresh oh, noodles. So we've got our usual suspects. We've got our chili sauce we got some chili vinegar i know there's no chili in this one but if we look over here this one there's chili and then we got then we got our fresh chili sorry then we got our fresh chili so i just touched this guy's bowl guys this is what vietnam's all about for me just sitting on these little plastic chairs local joint decent food beautiful all right let's try this broth oh All right, my friend was right. That's the best, best broth I've had on this trip, Saigon, and obviously it's my first one in Hanoi, but for me, heavy, heavy, heavy on the ginger, heavy, heavy onion flavor, very well seasoned. It's very fatty as well, very oily, which um, I'm not sure is, typical of Hanoi, but very, very good. It's not a clear broth, it's a murky broth. Plenty of beef, bone goodness. God, that is exceptional. You've got the background spice, the cinnamon, the star anise. Mm. Beautiful. All right, let's try some of this beef. So really, I came for this, I came for the flank. absolutely melts in your mouth that is fantastic and this is exactly what I needed on this cold miserable winter's day I guess 
Right, I'm just going to pop in some of these chilies. And a little bit of vinegar. Right, I'm not going to put the chilli sauce in because I don't really want to mess too much with this broth. Not sure why there's no bowls on the side. Usually you get bowls on the side. What are you doing Saigon anyway? To put your sauce in. To be honest, it doesn't really need much doing to it, but I've stuck in some of the vinegar, stuck in the chilies. Uh, there's no limes. There's no limes. Is this common, my Vietnamese views? There's no limes? Ah, oh, yes. Beautiful. Salty, rich, fatty. Now we've cut it a little bit with that vinegar. We've got the spice, that heat from the chilies. Mm. I love the fresh, the fresh noodles in pho. That is the pho, right? Anyway, I love the fresh noodles because we don't really get these fresh noodles where I live. The, oh, hello, buddy. The, um, there's a little dog. Um, the fresh beef, the Thai, it's okay. Um, it's a little bit chewy. Uh, no matter where I am in any country eating beef noodle soup, I'm always just going to get brisket or flank or shin. Mm. Which to be fair in here, ridiculous. Do you know what? I'd love to know how much beef they get through in a day. I'd say there's probably 10 kilos there. Just at a flank. That mama's at the back just slicing it all up nice. And you get a really, really decent amount in your bowl. There's loads in here. Mm. But as good as the beef is, the one thing that's sticking out to me is the sheer amount of ginger in the broth, which for me, perfect. As I said, the broth is really, really murky, which means they've really boiled those bones down. You can see it in the pot, the pot that's steaming away behind me. You can see just how not boiled down and intense. The soup is full of beefy flavor, full of spices. Do you know what, guys? I think, I think Northern Fur might have just won the competition. Do you know what, guys? Seeing I've almost finished, I'm going to. I'm gonna try this chili sauce now. Like I got in the habit of putting it into a bowl in Saigon because I, I don't really like the Saigon one that much. And then dipping the meat. Whereas this northern one, and I could be getting this wrong, but this northern one is it's made with more than just chilies. It's, 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 it tastes homemade. It might not be, but it's like an orangey colour. I'm sure there's some veg in there. All right, the guy in front of me has just put some in, so I'm gonna put some in as well. Now it has changed the flavor of the soup, but very spicy, very sour. No, I like it, I like it. What can I say? All right guys, it's very, very busy in here. I'm taking up a space, so I think we better get out of here. And I'm, everyone thinks I'm a bit of a weirdo filming. So let's get out of here, hit our next stop. Next Hanoi Classic. Let's go. Bye bye. Go man. Bye. Thank you. All right, guys, what a difference an hour makes. I left the hotel around seven o'clock this morning uh, and the streets were quiet, not much going on. Really, really liked it. It's now about half eight, absolutely packed. This alleyway, there was about four people on it when I woke up. And now, as you can see, there's bikes going up and down. Everyone's beeping. Everyone's out getting their daily produce for the day. It's a pretty cool little market. This is the hustle and bustle that you expect from Hanoi Old Town. Now I have like a bit of a love-hate relationship with Hanoi Old Quarter. Uh, this is probably like my seventh time here. So I feel like I've pretty much done it. As you'll know if you watched my last couple of videos, one which was a bit strange, admittedly, in New Hanoi, the Ocean City Park. I wasn't expecting to like it, but actually I think I probably would. 
I think I probably would stay there and then make my way into the old quarter. I don't know. It's nice because you've got all the old buildings, you've got like a lot of history here, but it's just very busy, very noisy. You can't really walk around. You're having to dodge bikes all the time, which is the first time you come here, a novelty. That novelty runs out pretty quickly after the third or fourth time you've been here. Yeah, so I don't know guys, I don't know if I'll ever be back uh, to stay in the old quarter. Um, I usually stay up by the big lake, there's, there's the small lake here, which is still quite big, which admittedly is lovely, you can walk around there at night time. It's a really, really peaceful, nice spot. I do prefer the bigger lake, that's where I usually stay, but again, as I said, this new part of town over the other side, all the amenities that you need, you can walk around there, it's not got the history and the, like the charm of the old quarter, but this just for me is a little bit too busy. So I'd probably just rather stay somewhere clean, somewhere comfortable um, and make my way in here or to here if I had to. Yeah, it's just a bit of a, I mean, the weather's not helping to be honest. The weather is absolutely horrendous. It has been raining now since I got here nearly 24 hours ago. But if you do stay here, Little Hanoi Deluxe, big shout out to them. Very, very friendly, nice, comfortable rooms. Little boutique place. Enjoyed it. Oh. All right, guys, so we found the buncha. So you can pick, guys, you can either sit in this one, or I think that might be the original there. And we've even got another little one here. All right, so it's another Michelin one, as if I'm following the Michelin guide. Right, so we definitely got to get some of the crab spring rolls. Right, so we're going to get the combo with the spring rolls. 120. I don't think it's the cheapest in town. guys so we've got these lovely charred pork meatballs some slices of charred barbecued marinated pork belly we've even got some uh, piper leaf rolls oh, these are my favorite guys and you can see in this dipping sauce all those lovely charred little pieces that have come off the pork some crispy, crunchy crab and pork spring rolls. And then of course, we've got our herbs. Chili and garlic, that's to add to the dipping sauce. And then we've got our bun, our fresh rice noodles. Right, also in the quote unquote dipping sauce, We've got some papaya. All right, no carrot, just papaya. All right, guys, I've got to make sure I do this right because I got absolutely crucified last time when I went to that Obama one. So we'll stick in some chilies, a little bit of garlic into our dipping sauce. Squeeze in some lime. And we're gonna start building our bowl, okay? So I'm gonna stick in some of the noodles, which is probably too much. Then take a, some of this pork. So I'm going to get some of the grilled pork. I'll get the, the lollop leaf. And one of those meatballs. Some perilla leaf. Some of that Vietnamese mint or balm. A little bit of salad and then pour over some of the sauce all right so before everyone was saying i was eating it like a soup so hopefully my vietnamese viewers you can get off my back now 
All right, so if I'm still getting this wrong, I'm gonna blame the two Vietnamese people behind me because I'm just copying what they're doing. So she's got more, she's got more of this. I'm calling it a soup because it looks like a soup, but it's obviously not, it's a dipping sauce, right? All right, let's try these little patties. Ah. The char, the char. Where I live, we don't get any char on anything because uh, Thai people don't like it. Mm. Fatty, juicy meatballs. A little bit of garlic going through them. Main flavor is that barbecue. All right, lolo. It's the same filling, I think, with lemongrass. Wrapped in that pipe of leaf, great. Yeah. All right, admittedly, guys, that is much better than just eating it Hello. straight out the bowl, like a soup. It's sour from the lime juice, but the base is sweet, salty from the fish sauce. Got those lovely, crunchy pieces of papaya. Mm. And you do get that lovely char off the meat permeating through the sauce. I love these herbs, especially this one, which is that Vietnamese balm? It's got like a kind of citrusy, lemony kind of taste to it, but it's peppery at the same time. So it's like a minty basil. So it's kind of like a cross between like a mint lemon basil. But as you guys know, I absolutely love all these fresh herbs in Vietnam. I just really need to learn the name. So any of my Vietnamese viewers, you can help me out. I really like the papaya. I like this crunchy papaya. The meat, flavor-wise, is great. But as always, it's a little bit tough. Got a little bit of work to do, but as my old idol used to say, Rick Stein, that's why God gave you teeth. So you can chew. All right. Some more of these herbs on top. Probably put a bit too much in there. All right, where's, I can't even see the spring roll now. All right. So had a little bit of time in that dipping sauce. Mm. Mm. Super crunchy. Even after leaving it in the sauce. Really strong crab flavor, but you've also got a nice bit of fatty pork mince, a bit of something crunchy in there. Like a root vegetable, maybe hickama. All right. All right, so has that changed my opinion on bun cha? Not really. Uh, I like it, it's okay. It wouldn't make my top 10 Vietnamese dishes. Um, but I'm glad I had it in Hanoi Old Quarter, because you can't come to Hanoi and not try Wun Cha. I probably preferred, did I prefer it over the presidential one? No, probably not. Uh, I preferred the spring rolls in the other one, but it was okay, it was good. Flavors were good, it was just a bit cold. I needed something hotter, like the fur, like hit the right notes because I'm so cold, as I keep saying, and uh, a nice hot bowl of soup was great. Everything there was cold, like the spring rolls were cold, even though they just came out well, she just had some out of the fryer, or well, some just came out of the fryer, I should say, and the meat was cold, and then the, obviously the dipping sauce is cold, so, uh, or lukewarm. So it was, it was okay, it was okay. My favorite one is still the Friends one, but yeah, I'm glad I came and tried it. Unfortunately, that is the end of my Vietnam series. So thank you for everyone that's watched Hanoi. If you haven't watched Saigon, get back over and watch that. Links are in the description. Uh, and that's it from us, or me, for today. So I will see you for the next one.